Hello lovely people, my name is Richard, I am a software engineer slash photographer based out of Denver, Colorado, and today I wanted to go over my 2023 vlogging setup, so let's get into it. This is the Sony ZV-E1. It is a full frame, 12 megapixel plastic beast. Have to throw plastic in there, but um, it's awesome. And it does a lot of things very well. My ZV-E1 has been paired to the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens, uh, f2.8. It does pretty well in low light and when you're vlogging and carrying a camera around, it is very nice to have a wide angle view, like 17 millimeter. You can fit more into frame, you can fit yourself and a guest into the frame. And you know, those are things that are important when vlogging. It's pretty compact for, you know, what it does. The Tamron 17 to 28 is definitely on the longer side, but it's nothing too crazy, especially when you compare it to things like the Sigma 24 to 70. Um, you know, they're both f2.8 lenses, but they come in at very different sizes and while the 24 to 70 is a nice lens to use on the ZV-E1, I find that it serves a different purpose when paired to the ZV-E1. When you just want to bring your camera around and document your day-to-day -day life and, you know, have fun while doing it in a package that isn't too large, the Tamron 70 to 28 does a really good job. It is not too ginormous and that's really important when you are bringing a camera around with you. The next part of my kit for vlogging in the year 2023 is the JJC Variable ND Filter. People have a lot of different opinions on Variable ND filters, uh, especially cheaper ones, but I find that for 50 to 60 bucks, the JJC Variable ND Filter does pretty much everything I expect a Variable ND Filter to do. There is, of course, slight color cast. I find that it turns images a little warmer, but that's nothing you can't correct in post, especially since I'm shooting everything in S-Log3. People also complain about the fact that with the JJC Variable ND Filter, because it is ND2 to ND2000, there is potential for there to be cross-polarization. Something that the JJC Variable ND Filter has that a lot of other ones, especially in the price range, do not and even the ones that are you know above this price range don't have is a hard stop for getting to cross polarization territory uh, you don't really have to worry about cross polarization if you're paying attention once you feel that hard stop you know that you shouldn't turn it anymore now when you're using a telephoto lens having huge ND values are actually really important and fine because when you're zoomed in really far cross polarization isn't really noticeable so I find that with a cheap JJC filter I'm able to use wide angle lenses and avoid cross polarization by avoiding hitting that hard stop. And when you're using a telephoto lens, if you, you know, zoom far enough, even in the high ND values, you're not going to get cross polarization. The next piece of my kit is actually the PGY Tech Mantis Pod version 1. Uh, I didn't know that there was a version 2, but apparently there is, and it looks pretty sweet, but, you know, this thing still does everything I needed to so I'm not really planning on upgrading anytime soon. The Mantis Pod is great because it is very sturdy, uh, it's compact, and it does a great job of just holding the camera up. You know, I, I had a Joby Gorilla Pod at one point and I hated it. I hated the way that it looked, I hated the way that it was flimsy and would fall over, and you know, this is much more compact and looks way cooler in my opinion. The PGY Tech Mantis Pod also has a cold shoe mount if you want to mount a microphone. Uh, my microphone is hot shoe compatible and so I don't really have a purpose for it, but it's nice that it's there. The Mantis Pod also has a phone mount, but enough about the Mantis Pod. I'm not trying to sell it to you. I barely use it, honestly, just because of the fact that I find myself hand holding a camera, but it's good to have a little tripod in case you need it. For the microphone in my vlogging setup, I'm strictly using the on-body microphone. I think that the built-in microphone of the ZV-E1 is really good, and I hate having a microphone sticking out of the camera if I'm in public. I just think that it brings a little too much attention to yourself, and so I don't want one. 
I have a microphone and it is the Sony shotgun mic, but it's the original or one of the earlier ones. So it was only like a hundred bucks and I'm using it right now for this. So it, you know, I, I think it sounds fine. I'm microphones don't interest me so I don't want to spend a lot on them until I absolutely need a good microphone I think this sounds fine if it sounds bad let me know that would be embarrassing but yeah if I know that I'm gonna be outside vlogging then I'll throw the dead cat on because again it's very minimal and it looks you know it looks fine it's nothing crazy and if I'm gonna be inside I'll take it off because again I don't want too much going on with the camera and the built-in microphone is so good that if I don't need to have an external mic, I don't want one. And yeah, I think those are the most important components of my vlogging setup. If you like this video, please subscribe. If you didn't like this video, keep your thoughts to yourself. Just kidding, but be nice. And uh, I hope to hope you guys stick around. I'm excited to keep using the ZV-E1 and I have more videos planned. If you have any questions, ask away. And I hope you all have a great day. Oh my God. Oh, hey.